Our first male valedictorian accomplishes more before 7 a.m. than most of us do all day. A nationally ranked swimmer who logs miles in the pool each morning before arriving at school. He cannot be defined by his multiple records and awards. This last summer, he traveled to Singapore to represent the United States in the Youth Olympic Games. Character, commitment, and academic excellence define Thomas's time here at Collegiate. Whether serving as the co-president of the Dar Davis Investment Advisory Board or in a leadership position on the student council, he gives his all and immerses himself in all of his pursuits. Thomas is determined, unwilling to accept defeat, and striving for excellence in everything he does. He balances a heavy course load with the demands of the sport and a variety of leadership responsibilities, all with a great attitude and a cheerful smile. While he remains reflective about what the future might hold, we all know great things are in store. It has been a great privilege to, privilege to know Thomas from when we were first career pals in fifth grade until now, and he's one of my best friends I'll ever have. It is my pleasure to announce Thomas Scott Stevens as our first male valedictorian. Thank you, Stephen, for that introduction. Um, I'd first like to start my speech by thanking those who have helped me stand here today that I just wouldn't be here without. Um, Amanda Searcher and Palmer Garson. Um, without them, I would probably be wearing red and gray today. <laughs> um, the whole family, not only for being great cougar pals and friends, but being like a second family. My family, for everything throughout the years. My sister Carter, for all her help with everything, including the speech. <laughs> Patrick Loach, first time here. You will be missed and we wish you the best. All of, our, all of my teachers, especially those I had longest, Ms. Barnes, Madam Peavy, Dr. Anderson, Mr. Wedge, and Ms. Harris. And Preston, not only for being a driving competitor, but for always being a helping hand. It had been a long day for STS Lawn Care. We sat, we sat three across in the cram truck on our way back from the last grass of the day. With no AC, we quickly rolled down the windows, only to meet a stream of hot air. Exhausted, I slouched back in the middle with my head back. I heard a rapper crinkle and turned to watch Stephen Holt inhale one of my milk and cereal bars I had purchased for solely for post-practice consumption. I had told him not to eat them. <laughs> Exhaustion had made me irritable. I told you not to eat those. You're paying me for that. Are you kidding me? Have you seen how much food you eat at my house? He replied. I ignored him. Pay up. No. A shouting match ensued. Explosives started to fly. I was about to throw Steven out the window. Both fuming, Sam Sharp snuck in. Are you two kidding me? We stopped and looked at Sam. Coming from the kid who debates tipping the pizza guy, we were pretty curious about it. You're fighting over 75 cents. You both made over 100 times that today. Sam was right. His simple question of, are you kidding me, forced Stephen and me to put our dispute in perspective. This question held us accountable, made us think clearly, and solved the problem. In our time at Collegiate, we've sat through thousands of 45 minute lectures and hundreds of blocks. We've done labs, listened to those lectures, and played games. But the most important thing we've learned how to do here is ask questions. You can tell how much our teachers care about us because they don't let us just settle on one answer. In Honors European this year, Dr. Anderson brought in Mr. Loach to debate the co debatable causes of World War I. They checked each other, pointed out holes in each other's arguments, and Dr. Anderson made a classroom full of kids smarter at the cost of pure frustration with her knowledgeable opponent. The inquisitive nature for their passions of unsettled history impressed the entire class. When we had a question, they both answered, both with different answers. By answering this way, they showed us there's no single answer, but many. Today, we're all asking questions. We're asking ourselves if we're ready to leave the second home we call Collegiate. We're asking ourselves if we're ready for this chapter to end and start a new one with new faces, new places, and new problems. We're on our own to answer these questions. Our collegiate teachers have shown us how. Now it's our turn. If you don't think you're ready, Stanislaw Slazinski once said, with, 
To believe with certainty, we must begin with doubting. If you disagree with King Lisinski, you're about to be handed a piece of paper that says you're ready anyway. <laughs> Next year and beyond, I encourage everyone to keep asking questions. Check your professors, check your classmates, check yourselves. We can't settle to simply accept what we are told. I push you to inquire and find your own answers. If we don't trust our individual conviction, then we don't grow into the fullest expression of ourselves. If we don't grow to ourselves, we grow to what others tell us, like Plato in a mold. Asking questions leads to originality. Originality leads to genius. But to finish where I started this speech, my last thank you goes to the 116 people standing behind me. I can't even begin to say how much I will miss you next year, but that's okay because over the past eight years, you guys have gone from my friends to becoming my family, and nothing can change that. I couldn't be more proud to call you my classmates and be a part of the collegiate school class of 2011. Stay inquisitive, my friends, and roll on.